DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. And now, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win $2,000. And it's even possible somebody might walk out of here with $10,000. Ducky, come down here. This is the secret word. And if anybody says it during the next half hour, Ducky will immediately pay him $100. Okay, Duck, on the lamp. Well, Groucho, before I introduce the first couple, I'd like to say that the uh, charming lady from uh, Tusa, Italy, uh, Bettina Consolo, is here again tonight, and she'll be out here later in the show to see what kind of a plot you've cooked up for. Good work, George. And since she's a good cook, I trust she has something cooked up for me, too. I wouldn't be a bit surprised that she has. Uh, right now, though, I'd like you to meet our first contestants. They're uh, Carol Yost and Emmanuel Klein. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bachelor life. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Uh, Carol Jost and Emmanuel Klein, eh? Well, they always say age before beauty, so who will I talk to first? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Carol, how old are you? 29. <clears throat> 29. And Mr. Klein, what is your age? 77. Oh, well, you're a fine-looking lad for 77. Should I call you Emmanuel, or do you have a nickname? Uncle Manny, I'm called by most everyone. Uncle Manny? Yeah, yes. Oh. Uncle Nanny or Uncle Manny? Manny. Oh, oh. I thought yeah. perhaps you were a goat. Oh. <laughs> I think you're trying to get my goat here, huh? <laughs> okay, we're trying to go. I don't know what I would do with your goat if I had it, Manny. Well, you might be kidding me. Oh. I say, you're pretty sharp there, aren't you? <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Manny? I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. February the 15th, 1880. 1880, yeah. Now, Carol, where are you from? I'm from Getty, South Dakota. And then we moved to Pekin, Illinois, and finally settled in Los Angeles. Oh, Pekin, that's where Luella Parsons comes from. Did you know Oh, that? really? No. Yeah, yes, you <laughs> You're married, I assume, huh? Yes, I am. How did you meet your husband, then? Well, he was uh, in with the young group that my aunt was in. They were all sort of dating together, and she took me down to the little cafe where they always met introduced me to him, and he swung around on the stool and smiled at me, and I just went overboard about him. You went overboard? Was this on a boat? <laughs> no. Well, you sound like you were really sold on this fellow, huh? Oh, I was. Are you just as mad about him today as you were then? Well, it's pretty hard to be mad about anybody after 11 years, especially after you hear him snoring. <laughs> would you like to cure him of snoring? I certainly would. Well, have you tried holding his head underwater for about 12 hours? <laughs> you know, we had a woman on the show one time who had a cure for snoring, and, and it really worked. Oh, what was Would that? Would you be interested I'd, in hearing? I'd love to hear it. She said when her husband went to bed at night, she strapped an orange in the middle of his back, and every time he rolled over and started to snore, he felt this orange, and he was uncomfortable, and he'd roll back on his stomach again. <laughs> and I, a friend of mine tried that on her husband, and at the end of a year, her husband was still snoring. But she had 112 gallons of orange juice. <laughs> you believe this, Manny? I believe it. Uh, Tell, us another. Huh? Tell us another. Are you implying that I'm, I'm lying, Manny? No, sir, no, no. Just, just stretching the truth, that's all. <laughs> You know, we have a quiz later where it's conceivable that you might win some money. I want you to remember that, uh -huh. because uh, I'm just as crooked as you are. You know? <laughs> are. Are you retired? No, sir, I'm in business for myself. I've oh. been in business for myself all my life, excepting five years. Mm -hmm. I'm in the antique business. You're in the antique business? Yes, sir. Now, do you have any other interests aside from antiques? Yes, I happen to be a, a jingle advertising man. Oh. I took that up seven years ago with a fifth grade education, and I'm not afraid to say I'll challenge anyone in the country, regardless of their education, to beat me for speed and originality. You write jingles for, I for do. advertising? And in spite of that, you've lived 77 years? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, uh, what kind of customers do you have for your advertising? Well, jingles? I, mostly professional people. I uh, write uh, a little advertising jingles. As a matter of fact, if you'd like, I'd be glad to write you one right now. 
Well, I'm not, I'm not that I'm, eager, but uh, <laughs> could you give us an example of a jingle that increased somebody's business? Yes, sir. Well, the first one I wrote was for a plumber. I do not write any fiction. Everything I'm repeating is, I don't have to remember because it's the truth. Is this the, the poem? This, yeah, this, yes, sir. Oh, well, that doesn't the, rhyme, what you just well, said. Uh, just, just, just a minute now, just a minute, boy. After all, I'm older than you are. You've got to respect me for my age. Uh, just a minute. The first one is read like this here. If your plumbing it is bad... It isn't often we get anybody on the show that can say that. If your plumbing is bad and you looked all over town, take up your receiver and phone L.Z. Brown. <laughs> now, if you like the well, melody... You know, that, that jingle sort of fits a plumber. Oh, sure. it, it, it even gives me a wrench, that thing. Show me, show me that Carol, what do you think of uh, <clears throat> Edgar Allan uh, Klein here, the jingle king? Well, it's all right, but I, I think maybe I'm just a little bit overly critical. I'm, I write verse myself. <laughs> You're a poet, too? Manny, run to be alive. <laughs> well, this is surely more than just a coincidence. It's a calamity. Is that why Fenneman teamed you two together? Because you're both poets? I guess so. Well, Carol, do you ever get paid for your poems, or is yours free verse? <coughs> no, I write for the Los Angeles Mirror News. They're in three times a week. Oh, well, that's very impressive. Uh, and now they're uh, being uh, syndicated by the Mirror Enterprises Syndicate around the world. Do you phone them in the morning and say the voice is yet to come? <laughs> well, it's like Shakespeare said, Carol. If you've time on your hands and your poetry's fine, Pick up the receiver and phone Mr. Klein. <laughs> Carol, let's find out some more about your poetry. What do you write about? Well, I write about the children and uh, your my husband. You have children? Yes, and my husband and myself. Uh, Could you give us one about your husband? Well, most of my favorites are a little insulting to my husband, so uh -huh. I'll pick out another one. All right, pick one um, out that isn't too drastic. I, I like Knighthood and Flower. Oh, so do I, but give us the poem <laughs> anyhow. Huh? Uh, he's lost a lot of gallantries he used in courting days, like opening a door for me or helping in small ways. Now, when I go out to the car, I find he's gone before and settled down behind the wheel while I close my own door. When we were wed, he said, no more would I do things alone. I never knew he meant to build me muscles of my own. <laughs> now I'd like to continue this, but we've got to get down to the serious business, which is winning money. We're going to play You Bet Your Life. You selected the dictionary quiz. Are you very good at this, Manny? Well, fairly good. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Could you give us a, a short poem, George? <laughs> no, I don't think I could. What about, the dog stood on the railroad track. He didn't hear the whistle. Toot, toot, sausages. <laughs> How's that? Wonderful. We used to use that in our school like about 35 years ago. <laughs> what is a cartographer, I guess? Uh, C-A-R-T-O-G-R-A-P-H. Uh, map maker. Map maker. Oh, Omar God. the map maker. You don't have to go any further. You have one right, three more right, and you'll have $1,000. What is a lapidary? One that cuts stones. Did you discuss this with her? <laughs> it's right, Hardly but you see how dangerous <laughs> this is? She might have said something else. She might have said a lapidary is where a secretary sits. <laughs> While she's milking a cow, it's a lapidary. You have uh, two right now, you're halfway with $1,000. All right, now talk it over now. What is an anchorite? A-N-C-H-O-R-I-T-E. A N C H O R I T E. N T H or C H? A N C H O R I T E. I'm afraid we don't know. <laughs> well, it's a hymet or a recluse. Well, you have one wrong now. Don't get the next one wrong or you're out of the game. All right, what does salubrious mean? S A L U B R I O U S. S A L was that? Salubrious. U B R I O U S. Happy, happy, and healthy. That's close enough. Healthy or wholesome is right. Well, you're back on the right track. You have one right now. What's the word for a trench usually filled with water that you find around an old castle? Moat. Moat is right. Manny, Moat, and Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Two more right, you'll have $1,000. What is a samovar? It's a Russian teapot. A Russian teapot is right. 
One more right and you'll have your thousand dollars. All right, what is the word for the sash or band that men wear instead of a vest? A cummerbund. Cummerbund is right. And you got four in a row and you have one thousand dollars. Well, we can't do it. Thank you, Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Okay. You won $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or you can come back later at the end of the show and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at $10,000. So go over there and think about it. And no matter what you decide to do, thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Groucho. Well, now, Groucho, as we promised, our friend from last week, Bettina Consolo, is back here to see you again. Fine. Send her in. There Hello, it is. Look at this. Hello, Groucho. How are you? That's my garment. That's my garment. Looks like two bath mats. Yeah. <laughs> are you sure this is a pizza? That's a pizza. Oh, well, it looks wonderful. This has got no. a salsiccia italiana. It's got a what? Salsiccia italiana. Oh, and what is this got? And this is mozzarella e anchovy. Little galecchi and then a little onion oh, you... and cheese. Cheese, huh? And a dog. And a dog? And a dog. <laughs> There's a dog inside of one of these. But... No, 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 it's a dog. Flower a dog. Oh, I thought you said a dog. I thought no. you meant a chow. <laughs> George, uh, I hate to uh, have you do these kind of men menial jobs, but would you put these in my dressing rooms? I'd be very happy to. Uh, and uh, alight my position, will you? <laughs> have him standing by. Well, Bettina, you know why we brought you back here. Have you found a husband yet? You know, no. last week you were said you were looking for a man who had never been in jail. Nobody have... yet. You haven't found anybody? No. Yet? Well, I have a surprise for you. We have located a man for you. Wonderful. Well, don't get carried away now. No, no, no. It's I don't know right. how anxious he is to get married. That's all right. We'll find out. I don't know anything about him. All I know is he's not married. That's it. George, will you send out the pigeon? I mean, the bridegroom? Here he is. Here is your dream man. Welcome to your bachelor. That is true. If you say the extra secret word, you get an extra $50 and a pizza pie. It's a common word, something you find around an Italian restaurant. <laughs> well, what is your name, sir? Oreste Serragnoli. Oreste Signorari? Serragnoli. Signorari, eh? Serragnoli. Serragnoli. Well, I'm Groucho Marx, and this little kid here is Bettina Consola. I'm very glad to meet you. Just call her a baby doll. <laughs> baby doll. Now, Bettina, I think we should find out a few facts about him. Don't you think so? He may have a record a mile long. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now then, uh, where are you from, Mr. Serignoli? I am Norway? From Bologna. And uh, you came from Bologna, uh, Italy? No, Bologna. Bologna. <laughs> Bologna, huh? Yeah. And you're not married? No, never marry in my life. <laughs> this doesn't seem like a very likely subject, does it? How old are you? Uh, uh, well, uh, and if please. you feel like lying a little, don't hesitate. Huh? No, no, I don't hesitate. No, how old I are you? I am 73. Oh. How old a man did you say you were looking for, Bettina? Well, around 65. 60, 65? Mm -hmm. It's too late for me, then. <laughs> Now, suppose you were married to Oresti. Now, this is just a, supper, a hypothetical okay. case, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, this isn't a fact. This is, we're just building this now. Fine. Now, suppose he came home late some night. Would you ask him where he'd been? Oh, yes. That's the first thing I'm going to ask him. I want to know where they've been, why they're coming home late. If they were all day long the home, cooking, cleaning the house, if everything was ready for my husband, when are they coming home in the night? What would Where you, you say? Where you been, all the day? One second. I just saw this one friend of mine. You know, everyone, see? Yeah. How is it you never got married, Oresti? Well, I tell you the truth. That is I necessary, like to be go ahead. Free. What's that? See, I like to be free. Free? All my life. See, I come in this country for a few months. See, 
It's 24 years I am here. Well, and she says you want to be free. Well, Where is that free? You... <laughs> Well, uh, Arresti, don't you want to have any children? Don't you like... Don't you like children? I like it very much. You like children? Absolutely. I adore children. Plenty. But not mine. <laughs> Bettina, could you come back next week? Sure, any time. We'll have another fellow. Now, Arresti's a nice fellow, but obviously he's not interested in you. He doesn't want... He is a woman hater. He's yes. a misanthrope. No, oh, I don't think. Oh, no, you're a yes. misanthrope if I ever saw one. Well, I told Isn't you. Isn't he a misanthrope, Bettina? Yeah, I think it's all. <laughs> well, let's see how smart our rest he is. He's going to play you bet your life. Now, Bettina, how much did how much did you win last week? We went for broke. You didn't win anything? No. You we went, went for broke? broke? Yeah. Well, maybe your rest can win something for you, and you help him whenever you can, huh? All right? Okay. I hope so. Okay, okay, let's go let's now. Go. You picked uh, Royal Capitals. Are you good at this, Aristi? Yes. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Ready? All right, what is the capital of Cuba? Cuba? Big city. Uh, Cuba? Let's see. I know, I wrote that. Cuba, oh, okay. Havana. That's right, Havana. Have one right, three more right, and you'll have a thousand dollars. All right. What is the capital of Denmark? Denmark, uh, Copenhagen. Copenhagen is right. Two more right, and it's yours. What is the capital of New Zealand? I, I can ask uh, my can future ask, uh, wife. Uh, uh, don't know. Eh? Like. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's Wellington. Uh, it's named after the Duke of Wellington. I believe. You have another chance. You have one wrong now. Don't get the next one wrong or you're out of the game. What is the capital of Egypt? Egypt, uh, uh, talk it over. Egypt is, uh, mm. I know. It's, uh, Alexandria. No, I'm sorry. It's Cairo. Cairo. Well, you... They lost, huh? They're out of the game, yes. I'm sorry you missed two in a row. You're all, uh, we don't want you to go away broke, so I'm going to ask you one question for $100, okay? All right, what city is famous for Boston baked beans? Uh, uh, Italy. Thanks. <laughs> Very much. Thanks for being with us. You bet your life. And Bettina, you'll be sure to come back here next week. And now, in just a moment, we'll find out if our first couple will try for a chance at the big money. All right, George, bring out our first couple and we'll find out what they're going to do. All right, Carol Jost and Emmanuel Klein, you come back, please. You won $1,000 so far, now you have a chance to win a lot more. Maybe even 10000 or you can stop right here and keep your 1000 If you decide to try for the big money and fail, you wind up with a total of $500. Now, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to come back, not because I'm smart, but because I won't sleep if I don't. <laughs> now, what no. about you, uh, Uncle Manny? Well, I'll tell you, I have made a vow, and I have no right to abuse that. I want to stay with my vow. You don't want to jeopardize yes, your yes, money, yes, is that yes. it? Well, would you like to take a seat over there and see what happens? Yes, uh, to you. I can tell you what's right going to happen. <laughs> Manny, you know you get $500. So you can sit quietly and rest with your conscience. Are you ready? I'm now, ready. one answer between you. <laughs> you know what this means now. You have a chance to win a lot more. If you fail, you wind up with a total of $250. Think, uh, and I can't go home either. No. <laughs> there are many okay. places you can go, Carol. Huh? Okay. Uh, think of a number now between oh, oh, one and I'm ten. Sorry. And uh, take a number. Two. Two, and give it a swing. No. 
Why? <laughs> because this is too much pressure now. Oh. <laughs> Your number was two and it landed on two. Oh. So this question is worth $5,000. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Your number was two. Okay, now are you ready? Now yeah. one answer between you. Yeah. I'm sure everyone's read the stories of King Arthur and his round table. Oh, oh no. <laughs> For five thousand dollars, I want to know the legendary town where King Arthur held his court. Oh. Think about it. <laughs> what do you say? It wasn't Camelot. It certainly was oh, Camelot. Yeah. There goes the husband, the poetry, the three children, and everything, huh? <laughs> well, what are you going to do with that money? Well, gosh, with, with three boys, our house is sort of busting at the seam. I, I think I'd like to make it a little bit bigger. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Congratulations for being with us. You bet your life. Thank you, Groucho. <laughs>